Hi, I'm Shalaka, marketing expert and certified dork. Hi, I'm Laura, graphic designer and all around artistic golf chick. And, and this, this is Nine, Nine Lives, Lives Two, two mics. mics. Every episode, we discuss our two favorite characters and relationship from The Walking Dead Daryl and Carol. Sometimes we get into heavy topics around trauma and its effect on the characters. So please be mindful and take care of your mental health. In this episode, we're covering the woes of parenthood with Daryl as he struggles with his guardianship of Henry and relives his visceral fear of failing Carol and losing another one of her children on his watch. As Carol's and Daryl's worst nightmares come true and history repeats itself. Wow, that was a very colorful description of what we're going to talk about today. I know, it started off kind of funny, and then it just didn't. We're, we're going through a range of emotions. We're, we're going through it. Yeah, we are going to. So, And why should we suffer alone? So, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to cover today, so let's just dive straight into it, shall we? Yep. We're heading into the final arc of the season, and once Daryl and Carol and Henry get to Hilltop, they part ways. And on Daryl's side, they're on a mission to find out why the walkers are behaving erratically, and they end up bringing back a prisoner who may have some answers. But in this process, we lose Jesus in evolution. Yeah, it's the, um, Jesus is the big death in the mid-season finale for season nine. We sort of knew that Tom Payne was moving on to another role on another show. In the terms of the show timeline, you know, Jesus was at a point where they were teasing some new storylines for him with Aaron, and it seemed like more things were coming for his character. He was kind of coming into a leadership role at Hilltop as well. Especially because they were setting up Jesus and Aaron to be a powerful duo, and you could feel that coming. So yeah, and it's it's like yeah. it's very jarring and heartbreaking that. It just ends so abruptly and we don't see the fulfillment of that arc. There was a lot of potential here to explore a wider journey with Jesus and, you know, give him an arc that's a lot more ownable. But we sadly didn't get to see that. It kind of becomes frustrating when the most notable thing about that character's tenure on the show is, you know, shippy moments between him and Daryl. People sort of gravitated towards that conflict that they had in that first episode. People saw Daryl a lot of different ways because of how... For, because, yeah. yeah, for a few seasons, Daryl and Carol were really separated, right? So mm -hmm. that sort of festered a lot of ambiguity. I think it's fine for people to get what they want to get out of, you know, the stories they're watching. Yeah. You know, this is maybe a little bit difficult to talk about, but it's kind of important to acknowledge that sometimes these kinds of ships do more harm than good, I think. Because... Usually it sort of revolves around a character who's not actually queer, or sometimes it's both characters who are not actually queer, and that the shipping of that relationship sort of pulls focus from, you know, what's going on with the actual queer characters. Yeah. Especially how things conclude sort of on the show. We know that Daryl was being written a certain way, and, and Jesus had his own trajectory that was separate from that. And yeah. The scene itself where he dies is, the scene was very powerful and, you know, how viscerally quick we lose Jesus. Yeah. Kind of comes out of nowhere and you're, you're really devastated after watching it because... I didn't expect it. I was not expecting it. So that was really hard to watch. You, it's a really hard thing to sit with at the end of that episode and going into that, then the hiatus that happened after because we kind of see this character leave before getting yeah. to see him in all his might, so to speak. It was just a really hard loss to swallow. And it's really hard to watch Aaron's reaction to it too, but I think that just sort of increases the pressure of trying to get more information from Lydia. Now is when that interrogation really begins. Mm -hmm. Now we meet Lydia. At first, she's a skittish, deeply petrified child with lots of unresolved trauma and some disconnect to the civilized world. Daryl and Henry quickly learn a lot about her, and this is where we see a hint of Daryl's parental instincts begin to kick in. I think previously, a lot of the children that were kind of came under his care 
were due to slightly different circumstances, but this kind of feels like the first time he's kind of taking it upon himself to be a certain figure for Lydia in the situation. Yeah. yeah, I think in this instance, it's quite the opposite, right? They're not necessarily looking for a guardian to take care of her. They literally need answers from this kid. But because she is immediately put into an us versus them situation, I think Daryl, even though he really wants to get some answers, also inadvertently connects with her because he's been on the other side of this before. Yeah, he's beginning to show that kind of parental instinct or at least some sense of guardianship over Lydia as he learns more about her. He doesn't think he has that capacity, but it's there. Yeah. And he feels a connection to this kid ultimately because it becomes very quickly apparent she grew up with an abusive mother and he empathizes with her so deeply on that front. Yeah, I think he starts to see his own reflection, right? And Cassidy McClincy did a phenomenal job. I loved Lydia so much. And I think as she's telling the story, he's able to call it out immediately as someone who did have a father who beat him. He immediately realizes that the story doesn't add up I think that's the first instance where, you know, her true story starts to reveal itself. Another thing that I appreciate about this time is to see Daryl's dynamic with both Henry and Lydia in this time, because Henry is very reluctant to accept that guardianship. And I think Daryl is doing his best to be a good father figure to him for Carol's sake. And I think Henry is also accepting it for Carol's sake. But I think Henry almost acts like Daryl's inner voice here. And not just an inner critic, but also an inner idealist when it comes to Lydia and what to do with this, you know, new prisoner that they have. And I think spending more time with Henry and talking to Henry is what helps him see that maybe she needs a guardian too because her mother is obviously abusive. Mm -hmm. What's really gutting about this whole thing is the glaring disconnect between Daryl and Lydia and Henry since you know he was privileged to grow up among people who loved him unconditionally he kind of doesn't understand yeah um, why someone would do this to their child and Daryl has to explain you know some people aren't meant to be parents and it's a line that reverberates until the episodes end for sure I think it does sort of weave into most of that episode because Henry spent so much time trying to get implore Daryl to help Lydia. And Daryl is having this inner conflict, I think, because a lot of different emotions are coming up to the surface for him. And Henry and Daryl have this disconnect because, like you said, right, Henry grew up in a privileged environment. And it reminds me of the same kind of disconnect Daryl had with Beth. But unlike that situation, he isn't trying to heal his inner teenager right now. He's trying to raise one. Henry talking about why his mother grew out her hair and why she feels safe now at the kingdom also brings up a lot of different emotions for Daryl. Because the way he hears it is that she wasn't safe when she was with me, but she is safe with Ezekiel at the kingdom now. And I think that takes him back to everything that happened with Sophia and with, you know, all the kids that died in front of him. And, you know, where Daryl's side, they are dealing with these life and death situations in the episode Bounty. There's a flashback, and I just want to take a quick moment to appreciate Carol's shoulder length hair because it was really cute. Yeah, it was so cute. I don't think I liked it as much as the longer hair, particularly the the wig that she has in season 10. I think that was kind of the best look out of all the longer styles. But but the, the shorter style was cute and it did give us a sense of, you know, that time passage. And we could tell exactly when this scene took place because of how long her hair was. It gave us some more really good kingdom exposition. That's for sure. Yeah. In this episode, we're following the kingdom on their own little mission to retrieve a projector bulb from an abandoned theater. They're all abandoned in this apocalypse, obviously. <laughs> wow, Laura. And yeah, we kind of get to see the kingdom at all its 
ferocity, I feel like everything about them kind of comes to a head in this episode and we get a sense of, you know, how they work as a team and their their ideology and and trying to find the magic. Yeah, trying to find the magic and even in the apocalypse is basically the gist of this, right? Yeah, it was a nice reprieve from all of the other stuff that was going on. So it's kind of a kingdom bottle episode in a way. They're having a little bit of fun while Daryl's kind of dealing with these children. It's interesting to me because even as they're thinking about going to find this bulb, you know, Ezekiel is not trying to tell Carol what he's planning on doing because he knows she's not going to approve. And when she finds out, Carol might as well have looked at the camera like she was on The Office because she just looks so done. But then she ends up helping them anyway because she gets that the point of the kingdom is trying to find the magic and the mundane and this darkness. Mm -hmm. But you can tell, though, that there's tension there and that things are not as happy and warm as they seem because things are falling apart. And she is trying really hard to meet Ezekiel halfway to keep his dream alive. And while this is happening, you know, I feel like in video game terms, Daryl is fighting a boss battle in Dark Souls and Carol is just at the fair in Stardew Valley. <laughs> you know, we cut back to Hilltop where Alpha shows up and Daryl is immediately pissed. Something snaps inside Daryl here when he gives Lydia back to Alpha begrudgingly um, in the trade. And the first thing she does is slap her across the face like the second she's within arm's reach. And I feel like you can just feel something trigger deep within Daryl where he yeah. tells her just on a look, you know, you're dead meat, lady. It's a really yeah. powerful scene, even with like no dialogue between them. We don't even see Daryl's reaction as the slap happens, but you just know what he's feeling. That's exactly it. Because when I first watched this, I had this memory in my head of Daryl seeing the reaction to the slap. And then I remember when I watched it the second time after that, I was like, oh, they don't, that scene doesn't actually exist. I just made it up in my head. But you can just, it's something about the shot that we do get of Daryl and, you know, Norman's expression there. It just makes you feel like you're feeling everything Daryl's feeling in a completely yeah. different way. I can't really explain it, but. No, I, I know what you mean because we get a, I mean, not to jump too far ahead. We get a similar scene in season 10, which we'll talk about when we get there, but. Mm -hmm. There are instances where we get to see Daryl's reaction right after something's happened, but it feels like you could see it that whole time. Mm -hmm. Daryl very clearly did not want to do this, but he had to do it. And Henry immediately calls him out. Like I said, again, his inner voice, his inner idealist. And Henry goes after Lydia. And Daryl, again, has to face this very visceral fear of losing Carol's child. And the next few episodes are just his struggle to keep Henry safe and bring him home to Carol. But now he's also invested in Lydia's future. And you know that Daryl will not let anything happen to Carol's kid on his watch. Not another time. And you can sense that with the number of times he brings up her name throughout these episodes. And how far he goes to just protect these kids, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just so Daryl, I think. As you mentioned, Daryl goes to look for Henry, who left to go after Lydia, and Connie joins him on the search. When their group is reunited, and they're sort of trying to make their way back, they have a showdown with Beta when they're holding up in uh, a pre-con condo building, which was an interesting setting for that fight. And uh, Daryl drops Beta down an elevator shaft, but he somehow survives. Ryan Hurst, ladies and gentlemen. And... Eventually, they make it back to the kingdom in time for the big fair, which brings us to... The calm before. The rest of the communities are already putting together a search party to find Daryl, Henry, Connie, and Lydia, which Carol is unsurprisingly very quick to join. But to everyone's pleasant surprise, the four of them walk right through the gates just in time. It's a really joyous moment, and... Carol is obviously relieved to have her son back in her arms and and he promises never to run away again and it's very sweet. And Daryl is finally able to bring Carol's kid back home to her. It's just very, very sweet. And I think he is able to see that happiness and relief on her face when she hugs Henry. And honestly, for a moment, 
when I watched this for the first time, it felt like that night when he went out to look for Sophia with Andrea. And it kind of makes me wonder about that time. Because what if he had found Sophia that night and brought her back? Yeah, that's a really interesting parallel. I like that. Yeah, it's just, it's the, you know, the searching in the woods and talking about moral. There are a lot of, I think, parallels here. But when he's able to bring Henry back, right, it feels like something is right in the world again. Because you know he has struggled with mm -hmm. guilt about not being able to save Sophia. But unfortunately, that relief and satisfaction and that feeling that he finally did something right for the woman he loves more than anything is short-lived. But more on that later. Carol then runs to embrace Daryl. And I don't know who else clocked it, but there's, there's kind of this little flex in Daryl's arm muscle as he embraces her. <laughs> this is also the shot that accompanies that image of the same hug where... It's on a different angle, so it looks like Daryl's side-eyeing the fuck out of Ezekiel. And it makes the whole thing funnier. It's the promo shot, right? It's so salty. He yeah. just looks so fucking salty. The most squinty, like, <laughs> death stare eyes. And it's so over the top I know. and funny. I love it. It's the Futurama meme of Fry squinting heavily. The jealousy is dripping in this picture. Everyone is very happy Michonne decided to join the party too. Yay! And Carol has her first reunion with Judith, which is very heartwarming. Her joy when Judith says she remembers her despite the long years of distance is kind of unmatched. You know, Carol realizes this is still her family and I really enjoyed getting to see that, you know, joy overcome her in this scene. I like to think that in this moment, Judith, like you said, right, reminds her that this is still her family. But in that moment when Carol says Judith's name, it just breaks my heart the way she says it, because you can tell that she missed being able to spend time with this kid all these years. But I also wonder when she looks at Judith, if she sees both Rick and Lori. And I know mm -hmm. she's not the Rick's kid, but she is Rick's kid, right? No, but they, they really did a good job with the casting because yeah. Kaylee looks a lot like Sarah, Sarah Wayne, Wayne Kelly's. So was, yeah. you do see Lori when you look at her. You do. You do see Lori when you look at her. And it's, you know, I sometimes wonder if Carol sees Lori too when she looks at Judith. Mm -hmm. So all the community leaders have sort of gathered together to have this difficult discussion of how to move forward with this new looming threat. And Daryl and Carol decide to take a group out. But before heading out, you can tell that Carol had a conversation with Henry and the king. Because they approach Daryl and Henry thanks Daryl for looking out for him. And Zeke is just standing there stone-faced and clearly irritated to be there. But you can tell that he's also only doing this for Carol. And he offers Daryl a place at the kingdom while Carol looks at Daryl expectantly and hopes that he would say yes. And just by looking at Daryl's face, you can see that probably the thought of staying here at the kin kingdom is as painful to him as it is to Ezekiel. Yeah, it's a really interesting dichotomy between the two of them because I don't think either of them is thrilled by that idea, but they would both, you know compromise for carol right and e even though it would be uncomfortable i think for either of them they would yeah. just, they would put that aside just to make her happy yeah i think so and as they're heading out right one of the things that always jumps out at me is daryl's interaction with henry if you go back and look at pretty much every interaction daryl and henry have had when henry has stepped out of line or put himself in danger Daryl's instinct has always been to bring that conversation back to Carol. It's either, you know, think of your mom or, you know, you've got family in the kingdom or, you know, what about your mom? It's always about think about Carol. Mm -hmm. It always comes back to Carol. And the last thing Daryl says to Henry is take care of your mom. And those are the last words that are spoken to him. And it's deliberate. Mm -hmm. I love this attention to detail here. And on Carol's side... It feels like it's a goodbye to the kingdom. It's hard to explain. I don't know. Did you feel that way? Because I definitely felt like an 
era was coming to a close in this moment, even though they didn't explicitly say it. Yeah, you could get the sense that something was coming. And yeah. that's really what this episode is doing. It's kind of setting up... It's it's bringing closure to, I think, something that they were working towards as communities this season. But yeah. then it's also bringing closure to that. Like, we get the fulfillment of what Rick was trying to build in the beginning. And mm-hmm. then we kind of close the book and tie a little bow on it. And then what happens moves us into a new era. Yeah. It feels like Carol knows, too. Mm -hmm. You realize that she's come to care for all of these people, and she's built this whole life within these walls. And it's interesting how the final shot we get here, again, feels deliberate as she's waving goodbye and the doors to the kingdom close, and Carol ventures out. It really feels like she's stepping out of that book of the idyllic fairy tale, and so far she stayed hidden away, But now she has to pay the price for being the grounded person who always talked about being rooted in reality, you know? Mm -hmm. But on the other side of all this introspection, everyone is enjoying the fair. But let's fast forward to where the plot picks up. And that's when Daryl and Carol head out with a crew to kind of get the preemptive jump on what they think the whispers might do to Hilltop. And we get an intense walker showdown in the dark, which is really cool. But the whispers and beta sort of back our whole group into a corner and shit gets real, real fast. Beta says all bets are off because they wouldn't turn in Lydia. We then get a flashback to the fair to sort of play catch up. And we see that Alpha in disguise had cornered Lydia in the theater after Henry had already disappeared. And in the present timeline, they kind of cut back and forth a bit. She emerges from the trees back in her original skin. So we know instantly exactly how much time has sort of passed by this point. It's not a coincidence that Alpha at the fair in her disguise looks like Carol looked during that sequence in the beginning of Who Are You Now? When she was gardening with the hat and the hair flowing. Right, yeah. Nice catch on that. Immediately they're giving you this dark foreshadowing that they are foils for each other, right? Yeah. Daryl gets pissed when Alpha calls her own daughter a weakling who never lived up to expectation. And you can see him taking that all too personally. It guts him on Lydia's behalf. Because he's not only affronted, you know, because he cares about her and knows that she's a lot more than what her own mother thinks she is. But Daryl relates to it in a very personal way, right? Yeah. As a a survivor himself. I think both Daryl, I know we don't see Carol's reaction to this because it's, you know, more personal to Daryl at this point. I think Daryl can hear his own father and brother in his head, but I also think Carol is hearing Ed. Mm -hmm. because this then comes up later in the next episode with carol i think with the the whole storyline with alpha was just very personal to both daryl and carol because she represented the abuser right Mm -hmm. alpha beckons daryl to go on a little walk and daryl and carol share some very charged worried glances about his fate it is very charged yeah And I feel like it's a silent conversation. With them, it usually is. It feels like she's saying, I can't lose you. And he is saying, it's all right. But if I die, yours is the last face I want to see. And I just, I love it. I love it. Alpha takes him to where she can reveal her secret weapon, which is actually terrifying. It's the biggest horde we've seen on the show to date. Sorry. I got to give props, though, because they managed to up the ante with the walker threats. Because at this point, you know, you would kind of not be able to conceive, like, how many more walkers could they possibly deal with, right? And then you just see that expanse, that, and you're experiencing it at the same point that Daryl is, and just kind of taking it all in and how far back it goes, and you're just like, damn, yeah, and this scared me again. <laughs> and this is... This is also walkers this woman can control. It's not just walkers that you can set fire to. Because she can manipulate them to her whim, which is horrifying. She gives very clear demands. 
she is not feeling their worldview and she believes they are going to be at odds no matter what. So she sets clear land borders. They're not to cross Whisperer lands again or Alpha will send the Horde to overrun their communities. She tells him that she's marked the border to the north and promises they'll see it as they leave, which sounds very ominous. It's foreshadowing and I don't think you realize just how she's marked the borders until you get there. But if you read the comics, you do. But I want to know what that was like for anybody who wasn't aware of the Pike scene, what they thought when she said that. Yeah, I I think just seeing this horde, you know she's going to be a formidable foe going forward because she has somehow managed to stay a few steps ahead this whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to add to what you said, um, I was watching it for the first time. And although I was kind of aware of what was going to happen and I knew that Carol was going to lose a child, I wasn't really um, aware of the details of that scene. And I definitely did not anticipate the depth of horror that was awaiting us. And obviously, we'll talk about Henry's death in depth. I wanted to take a moment here and just talk a bit about the shock of losing everyone that we lost here in this episode. It, it, it was a lot of deaths. Yeah. There's very rare instances where we're losing that many, you know, notable characters all at once like that. And in such a, you know very ritualistic way that yeah. definitely sends a chill down your spine. So it's it's a lot to digest. On that note, actually, I want to ask you, Laura, because I know you're familiar with the comics. What did you think about the changes that were made here to maintain that shock value? Because I know that the deaths in the comics were different. That's a really good question. This was one of the most iconic death reveals of the comics, too. And... I will say I love the way it was handled in the show because I, in that moment, I didn't, you know, I was thinking we would see the same faces or at least that the main ones, but, but I hadn't thought too far ahead of, you know, who was it going to be. A- Angela Kang with the way this, you know, episode was constructed sort of teased the major deaths we were expecting with those intercut scenes as they were doing the slow reveal. So if you didn't know in the comics, the big deaths that happen uh, here are Rosita and Ezekiel, but in actuality, Tara and Henry took their place, respectively. And we also get the addition of of Enid being thrown in there too, which was also kind of a shock. Yeah, I feel like we didn't have enough time to grieve Tara with everything that was going on, you know? Because it was very unexpected. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, purely a shock value death in that moment because they needed to stack up a few big faces to make this hold the same weight that it did in the comics. It's kind of like the Negan kill, like it's parallel to that in terms of big death reveals. But I'm still not sure how I feel personally about Tara's death playing second fiddle to Henry's, especially since he was, you know, aside from servicing Carol's story sort of the Carl replacement this season. And obviously, you know, as any fan would, I wanted to see Carl assuming his own storylines from the comics. But that being said, absolutely no hate to Matt Lintz. I think he did a fantastic job and it was great to have Madison's brother playing the role of Carol's second child. I thought that was really cool. So, yeah. But back to Tara, though, I can see how, you know, they maybe couldn't think of what else to do with her once she assumed a leadership role. They had kind of you know, divorced her from those kind of personal development storylines. I feel like for a while she was kind of just filling in the gaps where she was needed, sort of filling Maggie's absence. It would kind of make that reveal at the end of her head on the pike all the more impactful if she, you know, was super entwined with the story at that moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. She deserved a story arc that was distinctly her. But I have to say, for the most part, I absolutely adored how season nine was written and the trajectory it took us on. I think I'm just always sad when female characters or queer characters or, you know, characters who are people of color end up paying the price for the sake of a larger plot, if you will. Yeah, it's really a shame that we don't get any kind of peaceful resolution for both Tara and Jesus this season. Hilltop lost three leaders in one season. Yeah. And two of them were 
And two of them happen to be, you know, the most notable queer characters on the show. So their deaths coming in tandem like this in the same season kind of hits all the harder. Yeah. Okay, so let me reel us back into the scenic breakdown again. Daryl and Alpha are having this conversation and Daryl has just seen the size of the horde. The conversation takes a really dark turn, but I have to say, I'm so proud of Daryl here because the entire season he's struggling with his guardianship, right? But for one shining moment, he chooses to be a guardian and a father figure when Alpha says that she doesn't know if he can protect Lydia and he defiantly declares that she's wrong. I feel like that was a very triumphant moment for Daryl because, yes. again, it's that concept of looking an abuser in the eye, uh, especially in the context of parent mm. and child, right? Or So in a way, a lot of things are kind of coming full circle in this scene. And, you know, he's fully exercising that level of courage and control over an abusive figure. And yeah, and in the end, they win, right? Because he's freed Lydia from this terrible situation. Yeah. On that note, Daryl asks a very foreshadowing question. And he's concerned that she's killed Lydia. That's his biggest concern at this point. But boy, is that the least of your worries right now, Daryl. Yeah, she's going to traumatize you, but not like the way you think. Not in that way. Not in that way. In a different way, not in that way. The showdown between Alpha and Lydia hits all the right chords for me. Through her integration with the others, Lydia has found the courage within herself to reject her mother's toxic worldview. Alpha says it's poison talking, and it's a perfect example of how manipulation tactics like this are used to keep people in line and keep them docile in certain groups, right? And Yeah, I think it's just, it's how brainwashing works, right? When you've heard the same thing over and over and over since you were a child, it becomes your worldview. So it's huge that Lydia is able to break out of it and see that that's not how the world really works, you know? And it's really powerful. Rewatching it, now it resonates with me, you know, all over again in a whole new personal way. It highlights the differences between conditional and unconditional love. I think that's sort of the bottom line of it. And we get to see Lydia grow up in this very moment. So I got to shout out Cassidy's breathtaking performance here. Cassidy's performances were phenomenal. She was a great choice for Lydia. Mm -hmm. And I think in this moment, right, Lydia gets the moment neither Daryl or Carol got to have with their abusers. And yeah. it's very significant because there is nothing more crushing than being let down in the most horrific way by someone who is supposed to love you unconditionally. And I think that's why it hits so much harder. So Lydia's resilience here and her courage to stand up and fight against that is so important. And I think in the coming seasons, that courage is rewarded because by standing up to her abusive parent and severing that connection, she isn't actually losing a parent. She ends up gaining a few parents in the coming seasons who look after her. And I think guardians would be probably a better term for it, but it's, it serves an important lesson. sometimes. When you've dealt with abuse or when you've been in a codependent relationship of any kind and it's very toxic for you, I think there's a tendency of telling yourself that that is the best you can do or settling for that, which is a theme that comes up again in the coming season. But a lot of times that relationship is what's keeping you from the world that's going to be a lot kinder and actually show you love for who you are as a person, for being the person that you are, right? To me, this, this whole scene is empowering in a different way because it kind of shows that sometimes, it shows that sometimes you have to set those boundaries. You have to be courageous enough to let go of a toxic relationship or let go of a toxic situation from your life 
and then you are rewarded with more loving and kinder situations and people. You just have to have the courage to actually let go of the toxicity sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. On that note, too, it's so important that Daryl refuses to let her down, even when Alpha really threatens him there. He is a man of honor, and he decides that Lydia's life is way more important, you know? When we cut back to the rest of the group, Daryl eventually returns, and Carol is relieved to see that he's unharmed, and they run into another embrace. It's a very impactful hug, but I think it's also an underrated hug. Yeah, and everything about it is just so visually striking. You know, it's coming from an upward angle, and... You know, it was night before and now it's already sunrise and that's how long they've been out here. You know, they're exhausted. But the way the sun kind of hits them is just so spectacular and all these things are going on. You don't even see the others. You just see Daryl and Carol running towards each other. And I think that was a deliberate choice, right? It's just a moment to show that it's the soft and impactful reunion And there's this palpable, you are okay, quote unquote, that's felt when you're watching it. And we also get a heartfelt crossbow exchange here, which is also Mm -hmm. great. It's always the subtleties. It feels like she's just scanning him over. Yeah, it does. To make sure Alpha didn't dare harm a single hair on his head, you know? They just need to breathe each other in for a moment, you know? I think... Yeah, it kind of lingers for a while. I think it's the core of their relationship, right? When they're parting ways, they take each other in. And when they reunite, it feels like they're hugging to just feel each other's hearts beating because they just want to know if they're safe and alive and warm and breathing. But something this moment makes me think every single time I watch it is the whole time Daryl was gone, What was Carol thinking? You know, we didn't get to see her side, but I can only imagine what was going through her mind and how all of that is probably culminating in this moment when she's running towards him. What do you think, Laura? What was going through her head? I'm I'm pretty sure it was along the lines of contemplating violence, but I want to hear what you think. Absolutely. I feel like this is a very fun headspace to kind of delve into from the perspective of a Daryl and Carol fan. Obviously, it wasn't fun for Carol in that moment. Yeah, show some respect, Laura. God. (laughs) (laughs) They were being constantly surveilled, right? Like the rest of the beta and the rest of the whispers were there sort of containing them. So they were kind of in this position where they couldn't do anything. Obviously, if they could, Carol would have definitely gone after them and just followed, right? Um, It must have been really torturous for her and for everyone else that was trapped in that little circle because you know they can only imagine what these people would do because Mm -hmm. they've defined themselves as being you know giving into their most primitive nature you feel like all bets are off right and and maybe she's gonna do something absolutely insane and there's just this idea of they're always watching so you don't know uh the repercussions of um you know, trying to fight back in a moment like that, because what Mm. if that's what caused her to do something to Daryl or, you know, attack the communities or whatnot? I can imagine, though, that Carol was definitely running through all the scenarios in her head and, you know, just imagining what she was going to do once they come back. Yeah. What do you think her headspace was like? I like to think that, one, there were sirens in her head the whole time, right? But... Knowing Carol, I think she already had 15 plans in her head. Oh, of course. They didn't have enough information about the Whisperers to gauge the threat accurately at this point. It was still pretty new for all of them, especially because they thought they were, you know, being preemptive about this. And then the whis- the Whisperers still found them. So, yeah, I think she was just being cautious because nothing can happen to Pookie on her watch. I also wanted to touch on something here and say that Carol was detached from Daryl Henry and Lydia's storyline for a long time, right? But when I rewatched this, and 
saw Henry and Lydia's blooming love story, it just really made me think about the parallels between them and Daryl and Carol, which I touched on earlier and we'll touch more on in season 10. But Henry's defiance to protect Lydia is so much like Daryl's defiance to protect Carol throughout the show. And Lydia's demeanor in the early days really reminds me of Carol from the early seasons when she was wounded but strong. And I think at the root of Henry and Lydia's blooming relationship is courage. The courage to defy, to stand up for what's right, and the courage to embrace the happiness and love that's coming their way, knowing fully well that they'll have to fight for it and fight for their future. To me, Daryl's need to preserve both Henry and Lydia during this time is not only his intention to do right by Carol, but it's also symbolic because it gives Daryl hope, just like the Cherokee Rose gives him hope in season two. And I think we see him hold on to that hope and strive to fight for a future with Carol in season 10. So in the end, you know, he does end up learning a lot from Henry. It's just not the way he expects to, you know? I think that's a really good way of looking at it. And again, it kind of connects, you know, where Daryl and Carol are going into these final few seasons to where they started, right? Yeah. And it's kind of a clear sign, going back to what I mentioned many, many episodes ago, right? About this constant missing each other in terms of, you know, either of them being willing to receive the other wholeheartedly. And I think this sort of point in season nine, and even a little bit earlier, but it really becomes apparent here, is a clear tell that Daryl has reached that point, right? Where he is fully, he's come out of his, you know, six year long episode of solitude. And he is now ready to be present and take up space in the communities. And Hmm. part of that is wanting to build a life that has meaning and has purpose. And I think he's signaling to us by this point that Carol is a huge part of that. Yeah. And knowing Daryl, right, he just wants Carol to be in his life. You know, I don't think Mm he is at this point anyway in season nine when... She's still very deeply attached to the kingdom. We get the sense that Daryl is now considering staying there, even if it's painful to him, because ultimately he really wants her nearby. And he's also gotten attached to Henry now because he feels more um, invested in this kid's future and also Lydia's future. So there are a lot of things he's pondering in these final episodes, I think. And... Season 10, though, beckons that new era where he realizes that the timing is now right for him and Carol. But, Mm -hmm. you know, more on that later. Oh, man, I think our listeners are going to hate me for saying this, but and we're out of time. (laughs) There's a lot that we still have to discuss with the Pikes and everything beyond, but... We have to end our discussion here today and pick up with the Pike scene in the next episode. I know, I know, we promised not to end on a cliffhanger, but, you know, such is life. Laura, save me. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Sorry. Bye. Sorry.